I never thought that I could take my love for digital planning any further, but you guys, I have found the planning website of my dreams and I am never looking back. Anyways, that got really weird. Today we are talking about my digital planner setup for 2022, 2023. I started using Notion last January and it has been really amazing. It's a project management website and I saw a lot of like content creators using it and I was intrigued. I was like, I wonder if this would be good for lesson planning. And it really is. I even actually made a link up in the cards up here, whichever side it is, um, that I made a Notion planning uh, video where I just kind of talked about some of the features that I started to use, but there was just like one thing missing and that was the cuteness factor. So I actually just up my um, Notion planner this summer. And so I'm gonna share with you guys what it looks like today. So this is my Notion planner. Uh, so it is again hosted on a website that is a project management website that is very customizable. So already right here, we have our dashboard. So if you're looking, we have a school section, a planning session and a database section. So those are kind of like the three main sections of the planner. I also have right here like a get it done area and I have a weather widget. You can add in these widgets where you have like, you can put the weather or you can put a calendar. Here's another widget right here. And then I just have some cute clip art. This is my orchard planner is what I'm calling it. And then I also have a another template that is like the groovy, kind of groovy is just so in right now, kind of boho type of planner. So let's take a look. So first up, let's talk about real quick, right here, we have the um, kind of to-do list. So you can like put in things like, you know, your tasks, you can put in a due date, you can put in a checkbox, like, yes, I did it. Oop, and I have like a filter where as soon as you checkbox it, it goes away. And then right here, you can also put in like, is it a high priority, medium and low? All right, let's open up the school section. So right here is where I have a little area where you can like put in your important documents. So this is where I upload and I have a catch all. Like, you know, like when you get an email and they're like, yeah, hold on to this. Like here's our sub list or here's the duty schedule. And so I always lose those in my um, emails and then I have to go search the email <laughs> to find it. So when that happens, I like to try and download it right away and then just put it into my important, important document area. Then down here, I have my master calendar and we'll talk about a little bit of that once I get to the planning section. I have them both on the planning section and the school section and they're connected. So if I add something to it here, then it will be added to the calendar on the other section of the planner, which is really nice, they're connected. And then down here, I have my schedule and I also have a room for seating charts. Even though I am, I'm rethinking this, I may not use it for seating charts because that's like the one thing I actually like just to have a paper copy of it and not worry about it being digital. Okay, so let's head back over and let's take a look at the planning section. So planning section is definitely the part that I use the most is like actually like the lesson planner. So I have templates here that are um, divided in by months. So I like to kind of focus month by month here. I have it by quarter. Um, I have my resources. So I absolutely really love this where it's like a catch all for all those like main resources I use. So I have like scanned my game plan books in. I have them all ready to go. So I would just click on it and it would take a little while long because it's the entire book but I've just got it ready to go. And so I can open up really easily when I need to. And while that's loading, let's look over here. We got the folk dance anthology. I just bought from TPT from, let's see, Homes Sweet Homes, I think it is. I'll put it, if I'm incorrect, I'll put in a title below and um, put her <laughs> real name, but such a really good resource. And I have online memberships. I have quite a few. I have. Um, I have just a link over to like the planning binder, Mr. S. Orf, O Fortuna Orf, Missy Strong. I love all of their content. And then just some blogging websites that I go to a lot too. So I can just open up good old Aileen Miracles website really easily. And there's a kid or two. Okay, let's go down to, I have my state standards. So I have a link where I can just open up really easily to those ones and have them ready to roll. I've got my curriculum map and I have like with this planner, I have some like matching long-term planning templates so that are in Google Drive because I don't like to do every single thing. I'd like to do a lot of stuff still in Google Drive, but I like to have, you know, the option of linking them. Then I also have my scope and sequence. So same thing, it's over in Google Sheets. 
ready to go. All right, now let's go back over and let's take a look at August. All right, so here's my lesson plans are. Here is where I'm keeping track of my lesson rotations. So above here, we got K through three, like the lesson rotation here. And then my fifth and sixth graders are a little bit different this year. I'm seeing them more frequently. So I have a GMA group and a GMB group, and it's just a little bit messy, but that's okay. I put in things like staff meetings and conferences that are coming up. So it, this is just like Google Calendar, iCalendar. You're just, you click, you get to add what you need. You can, you know, say what day it is. Maybe it's on more than one day. Maybe it's 11 through the, or 14 through the, let's say, oh, there we go, 11 through the 14. And then I can put my title here. I can add, always add an emoji. So that's always nice. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Okay, and then down here are my lesson plans. So what I like to do for this, I like to use something called a board view. So there's all these like customizable like tables and databases where you can use them for different purposes. And so here is where I have my lesson planning. So I always like to have like the grade here. I like to have a status. So like you'll see right here, I just started planning this lesson. So it's in progress. So I really like that to kind of keep track and like look and see what do I still need to do. Um, I have my list of activities. Let's keep going. We got that. Like you can click, just take a quick look-see. I like to color code. Sometimes I get lazy and don't change the month, obviously. <laughs> I've got, I think just recently, let's see, this one down here. I can embed videos. So like this is where a world drumming um, I wanted to show them an example of the video, so I embedded it in here. So there's just a lot of capabilities. You can also embed things like from your Google Drive that will pop up in here. So I really love this. I love that you can have titles. So it helps me just keep on track of like, what is the goal? What am I doing right now? So it really helps. And also I have like sixth grade over here, like if I could change it if I need to, and I could also take this out from the hidden group. Right now I'm doing fifth and sixth grade block together because it's just a newer, um, I'm seeing them more frequently. And I just wanted to kind of focus on the same thing for them for now, but later on I probably will split, you know, something different for fifth grade, something different for sixth grade. And so I can bring sixth grade back in. Okay, database on the go, let's talk about that when I get over there. Okay, we're gonna go back to the planner and then database. So this is a section where I just really love to like kind of keep track of lesson ideas that I have and I like to put them in these kind of sorted tables. So this is another type of database that you can use within Notion and it's a way that you can, again, make these like tables that you can tag things. So I have concept databases, seasonal, and I also started a cultural database. So let's look at something like Rhythm. So right here, I've got like, again, the name of the title of the activity. I have some tags, like is it lesson one, lesson two, um, read, move, sing. I've got links so that I can link to it like, oh, the snowman rhythms. Let's go ahead and click on it. And it goes right to TPT where I can download the activity. I could also link it to Google Drive. It's just whatever is easiest for you. Okay, let's go ahead and close that one. Let's look at another one. So I just recently made, um, starting to make a movement one, so like some folk dances. I also put notes like on day one, day two, if I split it up into multiple days. Here's where like something is linked in my Google Drive, so I can just click it and it goes over to that activity. I also can put my tags in, so like you can say it's for what grade level. You can make your own tags, they don't have to be exactly like this, but it's pretty fun. And then let's go ahead and look at one more. Let's look at Asia here. So last year I made things for like Lunar New Year. Um, I have AAPI Heritage Month. So you can add in even like emojis. I added in the flags that represented the different countries. So there's just so much you can do with these databases and just kind of keep track of your lesson segments. And so when you're like, oh, next year, you're like, I need a movement activity for first grade. Let me look what I have. And you can even filter. So like if I wanted to look here and I was like, I need a folk dance for first grade. And I'm hoping that I'm gonna have these giant databases as I just keep adding and keep adding to them. And so what I can do is I can either sort or filter it. And let's say I filter it by grade level and I wanna just see things I tagged for first grade. There we go. Oh, hello. Everything is just for first grade, it pops up. So it's really, there's just so many things that you can do. Everything you see is almost all customizable. 
Everything can be changed, which I just love is that you can really customize it to what you need. So that is a quick little tour of my lesson, size, lesson planner this year. So Notion is really, really cool. And I hope that you saw like, just like, there are so many possibilities with this website. And again, just making everything so customizable. I feel like it's Google Drive on steroids. Like I just love the different like databases and tables and ways that you can view things. So yeah, anyways, okay, I'm gonna nerd out over here. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you are interested in learning more about Notion, I actually have this template that I showed you today, my orchard one, and I also have like a groovy boho version of it um, over on my TPT store. They are also included with those templates. So you make a copy and it's your own planner through Notion. And again, Notion is for free, so you don't need to have you don't need to pay to use it, um, but I also have tutorial videos that go along with them. So I know it can be a lot to learn a new website or program, but if it's something that like really interests you, I encourage you to check it out and you know try it out because you just learn little bit by bit as you go and it's very intuitive. So I think you can do a lot of really cool things with it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.